Hello everyone, and welcome to part three of our Whispers of the Old Gods card review. Um, today we are going to be looking at um, a lot of the legendaries that they have released so far for the Whispers expansion. Um, the first card we're going to be looking at is going to be Cthun which is the first legendary that they actually revealed when they revealed the um, Twilight Elder and the Beckoner of Evil, which couple with this card and several other cards that have been mentioned in my other videos. Um, the Claxi Amberweaver works with this card. The Ancient Shieldbearer works with this card. Um, and the Cthune Chosen is another one of the boost cards that you can use. Um, what I would consider comparing Cthune to, as far as it being a 10 mana 6-6, six, six, which you can boost to be stronger, is going to be a Paladin's Avenging Wrath. Um, because what ends up happening with Cthune's ability is it says battle cry deal damage equal to this minion's attack randomly split among all enemies and our avenging wrath which is six mana and it's only a spell card but the battle cry is similar to this spell card um, it deals eight damage randomly split among all enemies um, if you can get him boosted to eight ten higher than that um, this can be a really really strong legendary it'd be a really good um, late game finisher um, but it's it's kind of like a mix of a you know a 10 mana 6-6 six, six card with Avenging Wrath added to it as a battle cry um, I think it's going to be a really interesting card because um, there are several cards that work with this legendary. Um, there's going to be a lot of decks that are going to be s centered around this card. Um, the next legendary we're going to take a look at is going to be um, it's going to be Enzoth, the Corruptor. Um, this one is also a 10 mana legendary. Um, it is a 5 7. Um, Battle Cry, summon your death rattle minions that died this game. So if you have um, a lot of death rattle minions that are in your deck, say you have, you know, leper gnomes, loot hoarders, sludge belchers. Um, web spinners if it's a hunter um, it basically what it does is any any death rattle minion whether it was silenced or not will be summoned um to the field. Um, the only catch is is when the battle cry says it summons your death rattle minions that died this game. If you have more than I think it's six or seven um, death rattle minions that died that game, um, basically what the card is going to do is it's going to randomly choose which death rattle minions it's going to summon back that had died that game. Um, if you wanted to selectively choose which ones, like if you wanted to bring back, um, say you had two Death Lords and two Sludge Belchers, for example, in your deck and you ran this card. Um, when you played this card, if both Sludge Belchers and both Death Lords had died this game, when you play this card, it would summon those four cards back to the field. So you'd have four taunts on the field, and you would have this card. Um, I can see um, a lot of a lot of 
different feelings on this card as far as um, it also being another card that people may build around. Um, I can see a lot of Death Rattle decks that could be built around this card. Um, but it is a 10 mana, so it is also a late game card, just like um, Cthune is. Um, the next card we're going to look at is going to be a card called the Boogie Monster. The Boogie Monster is a 8 mana, 6-7. <clears throat> um, whenever this minion attacks and kills another minion, gain plus 2, plus 2. Um, this is going to be a really good late game card that you can play. Um, it starts out as a 6-7. Um, if you're able to kill a weak taunt, um, it would bump it up to a 8. It would then be a 8-9. But if you're having to kill a minion, obviously the health is going to be a little less. But this card could grow really, really quick um, attack-wise. So if you attack a lot of small minions, you're getting a little bit of a health boost to still keep it on the field, but you're still also ramping that attack up. Um, you could play this um, in a ramp druid deck, possibly, in the fact that you could um, you know, ramp it out like you do like they do, um, like the Ancient of Lore and Ancient of War, um, the Iron Bark Protector, you know, those really high cost cards that they can get out really early. Um, if you can get this card out really early, um, you would be damaging little minions, and by killing the little minions, you're basically boosting this card up um, uh, to attack and to defense every time you would kill something. So. If it was played in a ramp druid deck, it would grow really, really quick. Um, the next card we're going to look at, um, you guys all may remember our friend Hogger, um, one of the original legendaries that was um, placed in Classic when Hearthstone first came out. Um, he was a 6 mana, 4-4. Four, four. And at the end of your turn, it would summon a 2-2 Null with Taunt. Um, it didn't really see a lot of gameplay um, back towards the beginning. I mean, you'll see it every now and then um, played in decks, but not very often. But um, the uh, old gods kind of got a hold of uh, Hogger and kind of corrupted him a little bit. So we are going to look at the new version of Hogger, and he is now Hogger Doom of Elwyn. He is now a 7 mana 6-6 six, six, instead of being a 6 mana 4-4, four, four. but instead of it being at the end of your turn, getting a 2-2 two, two null with taunt like you did with the old hogger. With the new hogger, whenever this minion takes damage, so whenever he takes any sort of damage, um, if he attacks an enemy, if he gets hit by a, um, a spell, um, I think it's going to work like... Um, some of the other minions, like uh, say with the egg, for example, or with a uh, imp gang boss, for example, you know, it's a three five. But if you do all five damage, it still summons a one one imp. So if somebody fireballs this, you're still going to get a two two null with taunt out of it. Um, I think this one may see a little bit more gameplay. It costs one mana more, and it's got two more attack and two more health. Um, and the fact that it, t whenever this minion takes damage, you get a 2-2 two, two null with taunt. Whereas before you had to wait till the end of your turn to get the 2-2 two, two null with taunt. Um, this one 
a lot of people will probably not want to run AOEs as much to try and keep from getting overwhelmed with the 2-2 the, uh, two -two nulls with taunt. Um, some people may just fill the board up with the 2-2 two -two nulls with taunt and hogger and get hogger to a low amount and could flame strike the, uh, the whole field if you were playing against a mage. Um, it'd be able to board clear it. Same thing with Blizzard. Um, you could take out all the Gnolls and the rest of uh, Hogger's health. But um, it, it may see some gameplay since you would be able to get taunts from it taking damage. Um, we're just going to have to wait and see. Um, the next card we're going to look at is going to be... Um, it's going to be the Shaman Legendary that they have revealed. Um, it's going to be uh, Halazil the Ascended. Um, it's a 5 mana, 4, 6. Whenever spells deal damage, restore that health to your hero. Basically what that means is if somebody decides to Frostbolt... If somebody frostbolts that card, basically what's going to happen is you frostbolt Halazeel for three damage, and that three damage that's dealt is going to be restored back to you. Um, if somebody was to If somebody was to just hit you, hit this minion with, say, a weapon from a hunter or a weapon from a paladin or a hunter, for example, um, any of that damage that's dealt to this minion will be restored to you back in health. Um, I could see this being... Um, I don't know if shamans would want to damage their own minion just to get the heal. Um, I guess in certain situations it's possible that that, that could happen. Um, but we'll just have to wait and see and see how how this plays out. Because um, shamans have a lot of healing cards as it is already. Um, the next card we are going to take a look at is going to be Herald Vazlage. Um, this card basically reminds me a lot of the um, Tavern Brawl that we've had in the past. Um, his battle cry kind of makes me think they took the concept of that Tavern Brawl and kind of applied it to this legendary. Um, it is a 6 mana 5-5. Five five. Um, its battle cry is it summons a 1-1 one one copy of each of your other minions. Which basically means if you have, say, Ragnaros, um, Ysera, Sylvanas, uh, Maligos, any of those really big, heavy um, legendaries that are um, big game turners, you know, with Ysera being able to draw the dream cards, Ragnaros being able to do the extra... Um, Eight damage to either an opponent's face or to a minion. Um, Sylvanas being able to, um, her death rattle being able to capture a, a minion from your opponent's side of the field. Um, Maligos having that extra f um, five points of spell damage. Um, I mean, if you already have Maligos on the field, that means if you play this card, you're getting a another. 1-1 um, one, one Maligos, so you now have 5 spell power from the original Maligos and 5 more spell power from, from the new one. Um, also in the case of Ragnaros, you know, you have Rag on the field, he does 8 damage to a minion or the opponent's face. Um, you play this card, it summons a 1-1 one, one copy of that Ragnaros card, so now you have 16 damage that you will be able to use at the end of that turn. Um, with Ysera, 
same concept, you know. You have her on the field, you play this card, it summons a 1-1 copy of it, you get two dream cards that turn. Um, so I can see this played alongside a lot of legendaries that are played quite a bit. Um, you know, playing it with, like I said, Malagos, Ragnaros, Sylvanas, Ysera. Um, those are good cards that it could be coupled with. Um, I can see our buddy Harold being a, a core piece and a lot of uh, future priest decks when the expansion comes out. Now the next card that we're going to look at um, has actually got a couple components to it. Um, this is going to be the Rogue Legendary um, that has come out so far for the Rogues and basically the card is um, going to be Zeril, the Poison Mind. Um, he is a 4 mana, 3 2, with a battle cry and a death rattle. Add a random toxin card to your hand. Um, s these cards do seem quite interesting as far as what each one of them does. Um, but you get one of them randomly when you summon him and when he dies. So basically, um, it's a four mana legendary. It's a three two. So we would want to probably compare him to, hmm. Let's see. I guess we really can't compare it to anything, really. Um, but it is a, th a four mana, three two um, that we have. And um, there's five different toxin cards that you can get at random when he is um, summoned and when he dies. The first one we're going to look at is going to be the Blood Thistle Toxin. Um, this one is kind of like having a shadow step, an extra shadow step. Um, for one mana. Um, it basically works like um, a shadow step would for rogues. Um, it returns a friendly minion to your hand and it now costs two less. Um, the next toxin that you can possibly get is going to be the It's going to be the Briar Thorn Toxin. Um, also, each one of these toxins is one mana, so they're real cheap to where you could, uh, you know, keep the one when he's summoned and then hang on to the other one when he dies and try and use it on other minions. Um, but yes, this, this Bramble Thorn Toxin, um, it gives a minion plus three attack. And then the next one we're going to look at is going to be the Fade Leaf Toxin. Um, the Fade Leaf Toxin kind of works like a um, extra conceal. Um, it gives a friendly minion stealth until the until your next turn. Um, I also kind of think of these as scrap parts that they had for GVG. Um, as far as getting one um, when the enemies died, 
but in this case we get one when it's summoned and one when it dies. Um, the next one we're going to look at is going to be the fire bloom toxin. Um, this one, it basically just deals two damage. Um, it's, it's kind of like um, the fire bloom toxin, I would have to say, is kind of like um, I would kind of consider it kind of like having an SI7 agent um, because when you combo the SI7 agent um, when you played it after you played another card um, it would combo out two points of damage so basically if you get um, the fire bloom toxin from Zeril, you know, you play Zeril, he's a 3 2 for 4 mana, and you get this Fire Bloom, and you can immediate play it just like you would combo it with uh, your SI7 agent. Um, this one could be a good combo card. The thing that I can really see is. Um, people are probably going to be trying to run that Miracle Rogue with Zeril because Zeril is 4 mana and you get these 1 cost spells that you can play and those get you those draws for your uh, from your Gajitstan Auctioneer that's a centerpiece for um, the Miracle Rogues um, yeah, and it probably also works with preparation to where you could prep out, you know, a eviscerate, and then you could throw out a fire bloom, and then you could throw out a um, blood thistle and return uh, return another minion. I mean, it could just keep going on and on and on, and you'd get all this card draw. So I, f I have a feeling that Miracle Rogue will probably come back more in the sense that this Legendary has come out because it's it's a good card for the mana cost. You know, it being 4 mana, 3-2, and it gets that Battle Cry and Death Rattle effect of getting these Toxin cards. Um, I also see that it could be played a lot more in the sense that they would be um, stacking it with other spells to be used um, later on once the Auctioneer is placed on the field. Um, the last card that we are going to look at is going to be our old friend Ragnaros. Um, Ragnaros is currently played quite often still. Um, he's usually used as a late game finishing card. Um, he does the 8 damage to a random minion on on your on your opponent's side of the field. It could do also do face damage. Um, he couldn't attack. Um, so he was usually used for finisher or to try and uh, overwhelm and apply pressure to our opponent. But a lot of the, a lot of these legendaries, um, with Hogger being the first, has been corrupted. But Ragnaros has actually turned good for us. He is now, instead of being Ragnaros the Fire Lord, he is now Ragnaros the Light Lord, and he is a Paladin legendary card. Um, still same mana cost, still same stats. He's an 8 mana, 8-8. Eight, eight. Um, <clears throat> but instead of doing 8 damage to a random enemy at the end of your turn, um, with Ragnaros the Light Lord, at the end of your turn, he restores 8 health to all 
or to a damaged friendly minion and he can also attack so you have an 8 mana 8-8 eight, eight that can attack and at the end of your turn restores 8 health to a damaged friendly character um, if I was to compare the new Ragnaros legendary to a card that Paladins already have um, the card would probably be Lay on Hands um, Lay on Hands was a card that Paladins have It was a card the Paladins have. It also costs 8 mana, just like our Ragnaros the Light Lord here does. Um, but with this card, instead of spending 8 mana to restore 8 health to you and draw 3 cards, um, you can play this card, 8 mana, 8-8. Eight, eight. He can attack. And at the end of your turn, it restores 8 health to a damage-friendly character. That also counts us, I would presume, because um, with a Priest Lightwell, it says a damage-friendly character. Um, and it will heal minions on the field, and it will also heal ourselves. Um, Ragnaros, the Light Lord, being compared to Tyrion... Tyrion is a 8 mana card as well. Um, he has Divine Shield and Taunt, and with his Death, ra death Rattle, he has the 5-3 the Ashbringer. But he's only a 6-6. Six, six. Um, I could see Ragnaros and Tyrion being played in the same deck. Um, you would have a Taunt with Divine Shield, and one, when that card dies, you get a weapon from it. Um, and then Ragnaros, you would have an 8 mana 8-8 eight, eight on your side of the field that could restore health to any other minions you have on the other side of the field. So I was really shocked to see how they decided to um, change Ragnaros from his classic days of being angry and wanting to, you know, die insect and throw those fireballs around, but this time he's on our side and he's going to be doing some good for the paladins so we're going to have to see uh we're going to have to see how how these cards are uh, going to impact the expansion when it comes out and that is the end of our look at part three the current legendaries that have been released for whispers of the old gods and we'll see you guys next time.